Hi everybody, my name is Mr. Francie and welcome to Mr. Francie Reads. If this is the first time you're joining me, welcome to the family. And if you have found your way back, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a book tag. So I'm really excited about this because it's been a while since I've done one. It will be the This or That book tag. We'll get to that in just a moment. But if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. It really does help to keep it going. I have a goal in May, my birthday month, to reach 500 subscribers. And your subscription will help me on the way towards that goal. So if you can, please do. It would really help me out. And while you're there, hit that notification bell, ding, so that you can be notified each and every time that I do upload a video. All right, let's get right into it there are 10 prompts so let's get into the this or that book tag prompt number one reading on the couch or on the bed and this is interesting because I can do both but uh, lately I've taken to reading on the bed so I think I'll go with that one I have been reading a lot more cozy mysteries lately <laughs> and it does feel more cozy to be sitting on the bed so <laughs> I think I would go for that one what would you go for let me know. Prompt number two, a male main character or female main character? Wow, that's an interesting question that I did not think I would see in 2022, but I will answer. It really does come down to the book. If you're going to push me from the pillar to post to come up with an answer, my answer will be female because I love headstrong, incredibly intelligent female main characters. So if I had to pick a side, I would go with that. But I also also love um I also love ma male main characters as well especially male main characters that lead with their heart prompt number three sweet snacks or salty snacks when reading oh that's a tough one because I don't really snack much anymore when I read I used to and so to go back to when I used to I would mix it up but it would be more the um salty type of snack but I don't really snack that much anymore when I read, so there you go. What would you say? Prompt number four, trilogies or quartets, or what I call quadrilogies, <laughs> or quadrologies. It's one of the two. I always get tongue-tied. I think quartet might be better, but is it quadrilogy or quidrology? Let me know. Either way, uh, it, again, it comes back to the series. I don't think I can choose either side. I think trilogies are great because you get a clear beginning, middle, and end. And I think that works really well. But a, a quartet can also work really well. Uh, I've read several uh, series that go beyond three or four books in that series. I mean, you can see right here, <laughs> the Mortal Instruments series, there are six books in that one. Recently, I read Glazed Murder by Jessica Beck, and that series is the Donut Shop Mystery series. There are 54 books in that series, which is just insane. <laughs> so I'm not limited to trilogies or quartets, but um, if I have to choose, I'll choose a trilogy because you would think it would be a very clear and distinct beginning, middle and end, but I could go either way. Prompt number five, first person point of view or third person point of view. You guys, this has changed for me over time. Had you asked me this in 2020, I would have very clearly said third person point of view. I don't like first person point of view. I'm very uncomfortable reading first person point of view. Not anymore. In fact, I actually prefer first person now because it really does take you inside the mind, the thoughts and the feelings of that character when it is done from their perspective. And let's not get into dual or multi-perspective type books, but uh, just keeping it to first or third person writing style. I don't like second, so I'm glad that that was not an option. <laughs> but um, I can read either, but these days, funny enough, unlike two years ago, I prefer first person. Prompt number six, reading at night or in the morning. This has changed for me too. Again, had you asked me two years ago, I would have said different. I would have said I preferred reading at night, but these days I prefer reading in the morning. It just really seems to work out for me reading in the morning. So yeah, I don't know. It's, it's nice to get up and do the usual stuff that you do to kind of wake up. And then once I'm awake, the first thing I do is read a book. Yeah, so mornings at the moment. But what about you? Prompt number seven, libraries or bookstore? Okay, this 
really depends on the situation, you guys, because... Hmm. <laughs> Generally speaking, my preference will be a bookstore, because if I purchase a book, then I get to hang on to it. The problem is, if I spend a lot of money on a book because it is a really nice edition, or because it has more pages, or the author's more popular, or whatever it is, and I don't like that book, then I've wasted that money. So, you know, it, it, there is a bit of a, a balance thing going on here. But uh, for me, I find it extremely tough to get cosy mysteries in this country. I'm so happy I have these on display, because I have some. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so my library, I was fortunate enough to uh, borrow, I was going to say purchase there, borrow some books from my library that were cozies, and it blew my mind because I struggled. At, there's no bookstore in Australia where I can waltz in, in Melbourne anyway, that which is where I live, that I can waltz in and purchase a cozy. None of them have them, and you're even hard-pressed to find a bookstore in Melbourne that will be able to order cozy mysteries into their store. Trust me, I have tried it. I have scoured every bookstore I could <laughs> that's near me and it just isn't possible but um, so most of my purchasing is done online and I do prefer it because uh, once I've read the book if I do love it I get to hang on to that book and keep it as a memory whereas if I borrow it from the library as much as it is obviously a lot cheaper because it's free if I borrow from the library then it has to go back when I'm done with it so I will honestly say I prefer to purchase so that I can hang on to them for the sake of memories but um, yeah I would go either way but I'd lean to more towards purchasing uh, from a bookstore <laughs> if I can. With cozies, I can't, but with other books, I can. <laughs> what would you say? Oh, and also, um, uh, you'll be very hard pressed in Australia to find a bookstore that will sell a US edition of a book. And if you look around at the books that I own, most of them are US editions. Up here, I have my Sanderson books. This is a great example. Miss Born the Final Empire. This is the US edition. And it took me forever to track this down. You will not find a copy of this in a standard bookstore. You might find it in a thrift shop if you're lucky, but you won't find it in a standard bookstore because generally in Australia, they only stock UK editions of books. But uh, anyway, that was a long answer. What would yours be? Let me know. Prompt number eight, books that make you laugh or make you cry. Oh my goodness, I could go either way on this one. I have read, oh gosh, I could probably count on one hand over the past two years the amount of books that have made me cry, uh, and this is definitely one of them. <laughs> uh, also this one, A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara, that one made me cry as well, and if I can find the selection series, The Crown made me cry as well. So I don't mind having a book that is going to make me cry, but if I had to choose, I choose a book that's going to make me laugh, because if I can laugh all the way through a book, you guys, that is just a treat and a half. And if you want a book that is going to make you laugh pretty much all the way through, I highly recommend This Adult Romance, I've Got Your Number by Sophie Kinsella. This book had me laughing every second page, no lie, it was fantastic. So I would highly recommend that. But yeah, if I had to choose, I'd choose Laugh, but uh, I can go either way. What would you go for? Prompt number nine, black book covers or white book covers. Oh my goodness. All right, let me grab uh, some black books and some white books. All right, let's get a little visual, shall we? We'll start with white books. So I've got two examples to give you. As Far As You'll Take Me by Phil Stamper is predominantly a white book. And if you want to go even more white than this, Elantris by Brandon Sanderson, the UK edition. Isn't it funny? I was speaking to you guys just a moment ago about the US edition of Mistborn. Generally speaking, the US editions of Mistborn, of uh, Brandon Sanderson books are darker in colour than the UK ones. Most of Brandon Sanderson's UK editions are white. So, look, I don't mind these, but here's my problem. Where can I get a visual for you guys? Uh, okay. If I were to put this book onto this shelf. Because the shelf is white, it whitens out. It, it, um, it, it really pales the book in comparison. However, if I were to grab a black book, which 
I was going to show you this book, but this is more brown. The spine, however, is black. But instead, I'll go with New Moon by Stephanie Meyer. The um, predominant color on this uh, edition is black, and the spine is black as well. If I put this into my white bookshelf, as you can see, it stands out immediately because of the contrast of the white bookshelf. And as you can see back here, I have a black one, so it really does depend. But for the longest time, I only had this shelf and the one behind me, and so... Any time I would purchase a Brandon Sanderson UK edition, the books would just pale in comparison to the shelf, and it, it would just get lost because the shelf is white as well. But if I'm just looking at the books on their own, I prefer black books to white books because I just think the colour pops a lot more on a black or a darker colour edition of a book to a white one. Can you see what I'm, I'm in there? So see how the, um, the flower here, the red and the white pop a lot more on the black background compared to this one where it doesn't pop as much on the white background. So my preference will be black, but what would yours be? And finally, prompt number 10 character-driven or plot-driven stories. Ah, oh, you guys, how much time do you have? <laughs> One day I should just do a video on that topic alone. Look, it, again, it comes back to the book. I don't think I have a hard or fast rule when it comes to character-driven or plot-driven. As a generalization, I do prefer plot-driven books because character-driven books, the ones I've read, tend to lack in plot which annoys me. I think that the best compromise would be 50-50, 50% plot-driven, 50% character-driven. I think that would be a fabulous book to read. But um, yeah, if I have to choose, I will choose plot-driven because with a character-driven book, generally speaking, a plot is absent. But now it's time to see who I tag. All right, I have a number of uh, readers that I want to tag here. So uh, if I don't tag you, please feel free to do the t this tag anyway, and then just send me the link so I can watch it. But uh, I'm going to tag Tiffany from The Beach Bum Bookworm, Stormy from Storm Reads, Jane from The Reading Nook, uh, Within Pages, Angel from Angel Reads, Lee from The Dark Roots Creations, oh, sorry, Dark Roots Creations, and Johara from The Witchy Reader. I would love to see uh, what you guys come up with when it comes to this reading tag, so do let me know. And if you do it and I haven't tagged you, then please do it anyway. Anyone else who wants to do it, please do it. But in the meantime, that is where I am going to leave it. So once again, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so. I do have, as I said earlier, that goal to get to 500 subscribers by the time I get to my birthday month of May. So every subscription goes a long way to helping me achieve that goal. And while you're there, do click on that notification bell, ding, so that you can be notified every single time I do upload a video. Coming up this week on Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. I am going to be having another readathon with, uh, sorry, not readathon. I'm going to be having another reading sprint with Mr. Francie. So if you'd like to join me for that one, I would love to have your company. If you have not joined the Discord yet, link to that is in the description. But in the meantime, that is will where I will leave it for today. Letting you guys go with peace, blessings, and so 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 much love. Be kind and love one another. And of course, happy reading!